and the reality is that's not necessarily going to happen. Well, I understand the politics of it, but what about uh, the simple argument that we need new blood? We want new people, new ideas. We have term limits right now. You don't need to pass a law. If you don't like your legislator, if they're a bozo, if they're a bum, if they're a crook, throw them out of office. You can do that by voting them out. But look at the re-election rate. Obviously, the people want their people. I mean, that's well, what's that's... so baloney. They want them. Let, let me jump in. That's just nonsense, Vic, and you know that. Uh, the art of gerrymandering has become a science of gerrymandering, the use of modern computers, demographic information. The legislators have been able to create permanent safe seats for themselves, essentially dynasties. But let's stop when right we, there. When, that doesn't when we change. Limited the, the that president. won't change. Pardon me? Let's stop right there. That won't change. Gerrymandering will still exist, and all you'll be doing is electing a new face. The party that gerrymandered, if the Democrat seat is created, it'll just be a new Democrat basically with the same philosophy, basically with the same voting record, just a different face, and he'll be there for six years, because once he wins, he'll be or she'll be an incumbent for the length of time they're allowed. First, Nothing let changes. Me dispel, let me dispel the notion that this is a partisan drill. We are opposed by both Republican and Democrat incumbents who want to remain for a lifetime in their sinecures. But you're not so opposed by the President of the United States, the Vice President, the Republican Party, and you're financed by the, the Republican Party. Absolutely not. It's this absolutely is, is true. Look, no, no. Look at the survey data and don't tell me otherwise. The survey data shows that Democrats as well as Republicans and union members, the people you represent, want term limitation I, as I much agree. as the rest no, no. of the people Again, in this country. I'm not denying what you're saying. I've said to you, there's a very popular movement today because there's a lot of hate being sold out there at government. It's, I'm mad as hell and I want to throw them all out. But that's well, not the answer. Wait I'm saying to you, let's be honest, who's funding you? Not you that personally. That didn't develop. Who's the people's funding? ire. The people's ire over who represents them the didn't develop didn't develop independently of their conduct. We have witnessed the most, uh, the worst display of conduct in the Senate of the United States, the check kiting in the Congress and the rest of the activities. Absolutely right. Unlimited deficits. Absolutely right. People want to get control of their government You're absolutely once correct, again. and term limits don't solve one of those problems. Absolutely they do. How could they? Right here, in, right here in California, where these guys have created safe, permanent sinecures for themselves, they in the assembly will all be out of there at the end of 96. We'll get fresh blood, people with new ideas, people who want to challenge the system will be able to affect public policy. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's impose some term limits around this conversation for a second. Stay with us. Nightwatch will be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Nightwatch. We're having a very heated discussion here about term limitations. The California State Supreme Court has just upheld a term limitation rule for the state of California. Let's say you put in place these term limitations. What effect does it have on the staff? Does the staff, do the pro political professionals change? I don't think so. My colleague at the Washington Post, David Broder, argues that in fact you create a permanent government because the bureaucrats stay in place, although the people at the top, the politicians, may change from time to time because of term limits. I don't Mr. Think Ruler? Let me, let, me, let me put that in the context of what we've just witnessed in the Clarence Thomas situation, where long-standing legislators have tolerated the kind of staff people who leak material and do all kinds of nefarious political conduct. Newly elected people from across this country, from the grassroots of this country, would not tolerate that kind of that is just uh, hogwash uh, staff that, activity. That is just I'll baloney. Because look, we get newly elected every year, and who do they put there? They put this. They put their campaign worker as their staff person, and then they surround themselves with people who know how the institution works. Otherwise, you're a fool if you don't. So who becomes the power brokers in this situation? The staff, the bureaucracy, the special interests. That legislator, what? that new elected legislator, wants to come back. And the way they're going to come back is by doing all the things that the present legislator does. All you've done, I mean, everything you've said about the, the animosity that people have towards government, the strong feeling, the fact that we have some bozos there, that may be correct. But you're not doing anything different by term limits except changing the face. Mr. Ruler? We are changing the cast of characters who lead this country we are replenishing the blood supply of the leadership by this orderly change over time. That's what the people want, to move away from an arrogant, entrenched, professional politician class. And we have evidence, we have studied the voting records of incumbents, 
there is a clear correlation on both Democrat and Republicans, it's the same. The longer they are in office, the greater their propensity to spend and be wasteful of the people's money. Now, I know that, Victor, that you have elected some people. You have a lot of capital. The labor unions, and especially the public employee labor unions, have a lot of capital invested in the current crop of people in the legislature, in Congress, and in some of the states. But that's tough. We're going to get rid of that capital investment because they're not doing this government well, see, the and this country line, any good. Now we're coming to the honesty factor here. It's not to change for all the other points he's talking about. It's not to talk about the arrogance or the other things. It's because he doesn't like the incumbents that are existing there and their policies. And his hope is, the hope is that by unelecting these people through, since he can't do it through the electoral process, through the democratic process, is if we throw these out that we may get some fresh faces that'll think like he thinks. That's crazy, as I'll come back to say. In a district that is 100% Republican because it was gerrymandered, we're going to elect a Republican. If it's a conservative district, we're going to elect a conservative. If it's a liberal district, we're going to elect a liberal. That won't change, and they'll vote the same way their predecessor voted, as they have done historically, as we look now. If you look at the 42 new freshmen that are in Congress this year, and you look at, the at the, who they replaced last year, I will dare say their voting record is within 5% of the people they replaced who were long entrenched people. Mr. Ruler, do you think that Mr. Camber has a point? that you won't get any better of an ideological mix? What you will have first is you will uh, destabilize the current incumbency re-elect re rate of 98% or so in Congress, in states like California, etc. This offers the opportunity for new blood. First, let me, let me make the, the critical and important point that the difficulty we have now in recruiting good people is that most of them recognize that they have to make a career out of the legislature or the Congress in order to influence policy. If you have term limits in the House of Representatives, for example, of eight years, a person can run for the House this year and know they have a chance to be a committee chairman, to be the Speaker of the House of Representatives in the short term where they can influence policy without making a career what commitment. What a frightening That's prospect the kind that of is. We want people with real world experience not the people who populate the standing committees, all of whom have been in the Congress for more than 25 years and whose spending voting records are abysmal. We have a trillion dollar budget. We are dealing with the CIA, with foreign policy issues. We're dealing with things that affect the entire world, our day lives and the world. And you want to put, I don't want to call them amateurs, but inexperienced, inappropriate people as chairman of running these kinds of things? I mean, there, I is something people, that, there is something to be said about wisdom that comes with a little experience and knowledge. There is something well, to be said about, about having people grow into a situation. The fact when, I mean, what, when you talk about six years and eight years, what citizen in this country in their productive years of life is going to are going to give up their wage earning to go and interrupt it when they know they have to be there can only serve six years or eight years not many so what, people that what, i know of so victor what you're saying is i want the people to let, elect let, let, let them have want. a chance let that's what chance. i'm saying what, what you're what you're saying is that not only has politics in, in the america become a profession but that you like profession uh, professionals in there, and you want them in there for a lifetime because you guys can have more influence wait a second, wait a second. as lobbyists. No, no, what I'm saying, let me ask though. you a question, though, that I think will allow you to speak just to that point, Mr. Camber, which is that he made the point earlier that many of the people who are Republicans, Democrats, union members, do favors. If you go out and ask the average guy on the street, he'll say, gosh, you know, it would be good to get some new people in there. And these are your people in some cases. My people also favor gun control. They favor pro-choice situations. If we were to run government by public policy, by polling, I think a lot of the issues that I care about would be on the front burner and be passed. Mm -hmm. We don't run government by polling and by public policy. There has been absolutely no education on this issue on my side nationwide. In California, there was a, a referenda. It was a major battle, and it didn't pass by the big numbers. It barely passed, but they won. I'm not begrudging. The voters, that's what the voters wanted. That's what the voters will get. In Washington State, for example, where the polls are showing right now it's running 65 to 70 percent on the, si on the other side, there's been nothing to combat it. There are many, many people around this country who can fill the halls of Congress with real-world experience, and that's what we need and to get rid of the arrogant, long-term professional politicians 
who are creating chaos for America. And I agree with you. The only they, difference is I want the American public to have that choice. They can throw well, they, them out, they they can throw they them out or they can reelect whoever the they American want. The American people want term limitation, and all we have to do is figure out how to get the Congress to allow a limitation of terms amendment to the U.S. Constitution. They have term That's limitation now. All they have to do is vote their member out of office. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. This is a hot debate, and it's going to continue as it spreads across the country. Stay with us. Nightwatch will be right back. Caption Television. It puts words into your world. fighter pilot can't face this enemy alone. Become an Air Force physician. Aim high. Air Force. If you want to practice medicine in a more stimulating atmosphere, call 1-800-423-USAF. Tony has some drinks, a few joints, and got into a fatal accident tonight. Only he doesn't know it yet. Drugs make you forget, and if you forget how risky sex can be, you could catch the AIDS virus and not know it for months, even years. 